Good morning. God has blessed us this morning to be here this morning. He has blessed us to have a restful night's sleep. He's taking care of us better than we can take care of ourselves, all with the intent and the purpose this morning to get up. I know you thought the alarm clock woke you up, but it wasn't. Uh, the alarm clock was just a tool that God allowed using to get up and to come to this place and to serve him in spirit and in truth. That's why we sang songs, we gathered around the table, we fellowship one with another, all for the express purpose of telling God thank you for his richness, for his goodness, and for his mercy. Welcome to those who are visiting with us, those regular, dedicated, faithful members of the Church of Christ here in Trent, as well as those first-time visitors, maybe in person or those enjoying our live stream. First-time visitors, if you're in the audience and you're a first-timer, raise your hand. I've got a gift that I want to give you, not trying to put you on the spot. I want you to have a, a souvenir, if you will, a token, a, a gift from us just for coming our way and you blessed us. And so we, in a small way, just a small way, want to bless you. And again, uh, thank you to those who are worshiping with us online. Continue to pray for us in uh, everything that we do. And we'll continue to pray for you as well. On the prayer list, again, um, let's remember we're praying for Charles Goodnight's sister, George Ann. We're praying for Ronnie, Charles Crawford, Kenneth Longley, um, Andre Royal, who is a member at Mendes Street, but also at a rehab hospital in Dallas, recovering from a neck surgery. Checked in on him uh, this week. They have removed the neck brace, the collar. He's making fine progress, and, and his wife is asking us to continue to pray for him. We're also praying for uh, Mindy Wade, who's at home in Sweetwater, and then Cindy Gutierrez and her family on the passing of, uh, of her son. Let's remember to uh, keep everybody on the prayer list. And if there's anything else I need to add or, or take away from the, the prayer list, let me know after uh, services and we can, make, we can make the necessary changes. It's already been said, but I think we had an outstanding time at the uh, friends and family. Your, your singing UPS driver did exactly what I thought he would do what you all knew that he was going to be able to do. He did an outstanding job in the song service. And uh, here's a shot of uh, Jerry making a beeline over to the food. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Jerry, I love that shot, by the way. I do. I love that shot. You know, somebody asked me last week, somebody asked me, Brother Rambo, why is it that you're working so hard to try to get people to come to Trent. Ain't nobody coming to Trent. I beg to differ with you. Uh, and that's why I'm working so hard. I'm working hard to get us to start supporting other people and their activities, and it's only fair and it's only kind that they in turn reciprocate. And so in that vein as well, we're gonna have more friends and family days and opportunities for people to come, but we also, Trent, have to go and support other activities. One activity is the men's fellowship. Men, that's going to be on uh, July 17th. It's going to be at 6 o'clock at the Odom Lane congregation. This is a shot that we had from the last one in, uh, in, in Buffalo Gap. But this time it's going to be on uh, July 17th, 6 p.m., it's going to be at the Odom Lane building. And so, men, those who are planning to go, just let me know so that I can send them, <clears throat> excuse me, I can send them a, uh, uh, a head count and so they'll know how many to prepare for. Also, uh, Fifth Sunday Singing, we are going to host that on July the 30th. That'll be here at 5 o'clock p.m. Again, the church from Lawn, uh, Buffalo Gap, um, I've heard uh, from Tuscola, uh, even heard from some people at Merkel. We're, we're hosting this, and this is a time that we can come together and we can sing songs, have some food, some refreshments, but more importantly, guys, to be able to encourage each other. The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, we ought to encourage one another, and so much the more, the book says, as we see the day approaching. I, I, I take issue with some people, and I've, I've, gotten, I've gotten in trouble from this before. I'm going to get into the lesson. It's not going to be long. 
uh, truthfully, because I'm tired. Um, but, but I've gotten in trouble at other churches before because they said, well, our job is just to keep the doors open and, and keep the grass cut and, and just we just supposed to be holding on. No, you're not supposed to be holding on. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we ought to be adding to the Lord's body. We ought to be teaching the gospel so that men and women understand that they need to obey God before it's eternally too late. One young man actually did this. Brandon was baptized a couple of weeks ago. Brandon, come forward. And uh, we want to give Brandon his baptism certificate for putting on Christ in baptism. Uh, we are so proud of this young man. Y'all, let's give him, let's give him, let's give him an applause. Somebody said, Brother Amber, you a mess. Yeah, I know. I, I, I understand. I'm a mess. But if we can't encourage each other as brothers and sisters in Christ, then what are we doing? Why do we, why do we come here? We might as well stay home and, and, and do something else on Sunday mornings. As Christians, we ought to encourage each other because the world is certainly not going to encourage us. In fact, quite the opposite. The world's going to tear us down. So we need to spend our time in worship, in praise, and encouragement of one another. I'm continuing this series that I'm calling Summer Baggage. Again, it'll take us the month of June. We talked about forgiveness. The month of July, we're going to look at um, depreciating and devaluing some of the baggage that we carry. And then in August, we'll look at uh, disposing of some of the baggage that we carry in the name of of being a good person or in the name of, of being a christian some of the baggage we carry i'm surprised that uh that we haven't thrown in the towel long before so in this series that i'm calling summer baggage today a new month and there's some sermon cards just like this you'll see them on the back uh on the back pew i mean on the back table area there you can get them as you as you as you come out one of the things i want to look at this month is some of the baggage that we carry that's based on the flesh and it's not based on the spirit see this series that we're, we're talking about um summer baggage it is really about the baggage that we carry and 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 we think that it's about peace and a lot of times it's not about peace it's really about the flesh and so today I want to start this series for July and I want you to I want to wrap it around this one phrase so all this month you're gonna hear this phrase from me Lord less of me <clears throat> and more of thee Lord in my life I, I want less of me less of my will and less of what I want and I want that I want my life Lord to be more about you less of me and more of thee. And so in July, we're going to declare our spiritual dependence. Lord, I need you. Lord, you can't live your life without God. And if you don't believe it, just try it. See, you think, and I think, that we've done everything in and of our own power. But, but what Brandon saw and what he was able to read from the scripture and understand is outside of God, you don't have a relationship that's worthwhile. Outside of the fellowship of God and God's word, not his people, because we're not perfect, but God is. Outside of a relationship with God, you might as well hang it up. And it's better to live as a Christian in God's kingdom than to try to live this life without God. One of the bags we're going to look at today, the whole passage, I'll spend the whole month in uh, Galatians chapter 5. The first bag I'm going to look at is the bag of conflict. Life by the Spirit is the theme of of Galatians chapter 5. So if you ever want to do some reading in your own personal time and your own personal growth and your own personal study, read Galatians 5. I'm going to take us through it this month, but put it in context and the framework that you are really in a war. You're really in conflict. You're really, you're really living diametrically opposed. The flesh is diametrically opposed to the spirit. Let's pray for a minute. Father, thank you for your love and for your mercy. 
that you constantly show us through Jesus Christ. Lord, we recognize that we are a work in progress, but you loved us so much that you sent your son to die on the cross for our sins. Help us to always live lives worthy of that calling. We sin, we fall short. But this month, Lord, help us to look at the baggage that sometimes we hold on too tight and we got to be able to let it go and let you prosper us. Forgive us of our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me show you the first baggage, but let me, let me dress the table for where we're going this month. Paul says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Galatians 5, starting at verse 13. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. He says, he's quoting actually from the, the Hebrew Shema, uh, and he's really saying the entire law, the entire old law can be inculcated, wrapped up into this one expression, this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then he gives some illustrations of this, and this is where I get the idea of the baggage. He's going to give some, some illustrations, some baggage that next month we need to let go, but this month we need to identify. If you bite and devour one another, watch out, or you'll be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. That's the first bag. That's the one I'll talk about today for a little bit. So that you are not to do what you want to do. That's the second bag I'll talk about next week, and that is control. Some of us, boy, some of us, we got control issues. I mean, we got control issues. We'll talk about that next week. And then he says, but then uh, if you are th uh, that uh, influence, you have that kind of influence, then you are not under the law. And then he says the acts of the flesh are obvious. They're these, sexual immorality and impurity and, and, and debauchery and idolatry and witchcraft and hatred and discord and jealousy and fits of rage and selfish ambitions and, and dissensions and fractions and, and drunkenness and envy and such the like. That's reputation. He says, now I warn you, as I did before, and the last one's retribution, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Look at the bags like this. Conflict, control, influence, reputation, and retribution. Let me talk a little bit of what I call conflict. Conflict really is about us as Christians, even though we are in the world, but we are not of the world. The, the Christian life itself, the true essence of our Christian life is all about uh, freedom, and we're freed only because we've crucified the flesh by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we live in the power of the Holy Spirit. So when we talk about this bag of conflict and carrying this bag uh, of conflict around, let me frame it like this. You ever known anybody who like mess? I got some people in my family that, uh, Lord have mercy, I love them, I love them dearly, but if it's not mess going on, they're not happy. See, y'all don't have, okay, we don't have no people like that in Trent, but in Georgia, where I'm from, we got some people that just love mess. My aunt used to say they were born in the objective case. So you got some people that just love, if your life don't have drama in it, if you don't have conflict, if there's no mess going on, you're not happy. Well, that's contrary to the life we need to live in Jesus Christ. Two things about living a life of conflict. The idea of living the life of conflict and carrying this bag of conflict, number one, the Christian life and living by the Spirit is a life of conflict because we, 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 we live in a way as Christians, we, we're, we're 
are, are two things are calling for our allegiance. We, we have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, so we are of the spirit, but we live in a world that is fleshly and carnal. And every day we're, 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 we're confronted with which way am I going to go? The old cartoons that, that are biblically inaccurate, but still funny. The old cartoons had it like this. You're in the middle of making a decision and you got a devil on this shoulder and on this shoulder, you got an angel, and both of them are talking to you. Now, biblically, you're not going to find that, but that cartoon is so funny because it does illustrate the conflict that we live in. Well, because of this conflict, y'all, there's almost like a civil war going on in between us. And every day, we have to make decisions, you and I, of where we're going to place our flag of allegiance today. Am I going to do the things God wants me to do and walk in the spirit, as Paul says in Galatians 5? Or am I going to just throw my hands up and give up? Say, Lord, let what happened going to happen, and I'll give over to the desires of the flesh. Because of this conflict, we don't always act the way we should. And unfortunately, quiet as it's kept, sad as it is, sometimes we allow our sinful desires to influence us rather than our spiritual desires. Romans chapter 7, Paul said, this, this war, this duality that's going on, I, I don't get to do the things that I want to do, um, but the evil that I don't want to do, that's what I end up doing. And I keep on doing this. In verse 20, he says, uh, now if I do uh, not what I want to do, it's no longer I who do it, but it's the sin that's living in me. So he says, I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. Again, I said some of us take great pleasure and delight in this bag called conflict, this mess. As Christians, we need to be people of light, and we need to be people of hope. You remember the text, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. You remember what Paul said? I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. And he says now, at the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Every day we need to be deliberate and intentional of where we're going to plant that flag of allegiance. Some days the spirit wins out. Some days the flesh wins out. But you know what? Don't despair. Just because the flesh wins out, Repent, tell God you're sorry, try it again the next day, and maybe the spirit will win out. The second part of this contrast, and then I'm done, is this bag of conflict is all about living a life of contrast. Um, people in the uh, community need to know and see Christ glorified and magnified in our lives. They need to know that there was a, a before and an after when it comes to Fred Famble. And I like to tell it like this. They, they need to know that, that this might be the revised standard version that you see, this handsome, debonair, well-dressed, good-looking, stop me when you want to, young man is before, but there was a King James. There was, there was a young man that didn't know God. That, that, that like, like Brandon years ago that obeyed the gospel and Paul said, you were washed, you were clean. And, and like newborn babes, Peter says, desire the sincere milk of the word. Oh, you look the same on the outside. Brandon's the same handsome young man on the outside. But on the inside, he's been washed. And his spirit now is brand new, connected to God. That's how we should be known in the community. We look the same, but we shouldn't act the same. Um, we ought to live our lives, and Christ ought to be glorified and magnified through us. We live in the world, but we are not of the world. The world then, looking at us, should see a difference. We should always be about two things. If you don't get anything else, get this and take this with you. As Christians, and not only in the Trent community, Merkel, wherever we are, the world, as Christians, we ought to be about two things, hope and help. And I, I'm afraid sometimes we get caught up, and uh, we, we really don't, we don't live in hope like we should, and we don't help like we should. Romans 12, Paul said, I urge you, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, 
that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, pleasing, which is your true and your proper worship. In verse 2, he says, don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and that perfect will of God. Let me wrap it up like this. Zig Ziglar said there's three C's when it comes to life. Choices, chances, and chances. Uh, choices and chances. Chances you must make in order to make the choice to take a chance or your life is never going to change. In other words, we got to make up our mind. I'm going to make a choice to take a chance and then I'm going to take a chance that things are going to be better and they're not going to be the same as they were before. James 1.27 really illustrates this to me, then I'm done. James says religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted. King James there says the word unspotted. In, in its original language, the, really, the, the, the word really means keep yourself uncontaminated. I never will forget. Um, I worked at the hospital in surgery as a, a, a orderly um, for a little bit. And they trained us when you go into the, the, the OR, everybody's got on these surgical gowns and they're, they're masked up and there's certain things that you've got to do when you're in there because if you don't do it right, you're going to contaminate that surgical field and that whole room is no good and the patient's life is in jeopardy. Every time I read that text and think about unspotted or polluted, I think about what they trained us at the hospital, how to enter that room and walk in such a way that we don't contaminate anything and put everybody's life and work in jeopardy. Isn't that the way we should be as Christians? We live in the world. We're an example of hope. We, we're in the help, but we should not let the world contaminate us because we are both salt and we are light. And our job is to maintain that spiritual integrity so that people would look at us. No, we're not all that. We aren't. But Christ in you, Colossians 1.27, Christ in me is the hope of glory. The invitation time is a time that we come together and we recognize two things. Number one, in my life, I need God. And there might be something that I'm dealing with in my life right now that I've been trying to handle on my own. And let me tell you, as Texans would say, if you're trying to live this life absent of God, you're just spinning your wheels. <laughs> you're not accomplishing anything. And I'm going to tell you the end of the story. It ain't going to work. You need God. We all need God in two ways you can respond in just a moment. If there's something that you want us to pray about, a health concern or something for a family member, in just a moment we're going to stand and we're going to sing, Love Lifted Me. When we start singing, you come forward and just let me know what that prayer request is and I'll make that on your behalf to the church because absent of God, we can do nothing. Or you might be at a place in your life like our brother Brandon two weeks ago who recognized I'm living outside. I'm living a guilty distance away from God and I need my soul to be connected. I need to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he came forward. We studied the word. He's been studying the word and he came just like everybody else in the New Testament that comes to God. We've got to hear God's word, believe it, repent of the sins, confess Christ, and then be willing to be baptized in water for the remission of our sins, not poured on, not sprinkled, but completely immersed in water for the remission of our sins. 1 Corinthians 15, like as Christ was raised up from the grave by the glory of the Father, from the liquid tomb of baptism, we too should rise up to walk in a newness of life. 
If you have an invitation need, if you have something you want us to pray for or a Bible question that we can answer, we invite you to come now as we stand and we're going to sing the song, Love Lifted Me.